Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's Friday the 11th of March today. Just gone noon, 12 o'clock. Today we're going to be potting on these. These are my Rubecchia. If you can see there, a little bit of a close up. Nice, healthy looking plants. I'm using this 40 cell tray, a couple of centimetres across, and there are a few, probably four or five centimetres deep. Really good, and these will be. Oh, wow. Oh, every time I stop at that coronation, it smells absolutely divine. These will be in here. These are my petunias that I uh, transplanted a couple of days ago. Give them their first feed as well, and look how much better they are looking. These do tend to suffer with the powdery mildew, and they can get some green fly and white fly on them, so I'll keep my eye on them. If I get any infections, they will get sprayed. So, get that back across there, that's on properly. Come back round. Just get this set up, folks. Yeah, that's my stand set up, folks. So, just get this done. Just try up a little bit more. Like so. I should do it, I think. Hopefully. Right, so just put that, turn that around. What I need to do is yeah, that's that setup, folks. What I need to do with these is pick these out. So what I'm using for this is a pen. When you can just hear it, just started raining outside. Not the end of the world. All I've done, I've been using a peat feed compost. I think it's grown more or something like that. I think it's Westlands. You get your pen. Go now, pull in each one, and then what you should do then is get your pen underneath, get as much of the compost as you can out with it. Then once that's done, what I like to do is just gently remove most of the compost, like so, and you end up with, you can just see this beautiful root system there. Just get a little bit closer. Nice little root system there. Then you want to hold it by a leaf, not by the main stem, and then just into the middle like so. Once it's in there, just a little bit of compost just around the edges, just to seal it, seal it in. Right, so we'll get on with the rest. Like I said, it's a peak free compost, this, this one I'm using. I got it when I went to Wilco a little bit ago, a few weeks ago. I thought while I'm here. Might as well get some compost, so I thought I'd give this a try. And so far, the petunias are liking it, which is great. We'll see how these Rebecca's enjoy it. Yeah, in like so. This has got a lot of wood fibre in, it's nice and airy. So it's how well it retains the moisture, whether it retains too much moisture, not enough. These are all things you have to work out. I don't think it'd be very good for seed sowing. I will give it a try for seed sowing. So I'm not going to say that for definite. So seed sowing, yeah, we'll give it a try. I'm hoping it's going to be good for seed sowing because I really, let's get some of that off. I really do want a good peat feed compost that I can sow seeds in without them rotting or getting too damp. Yeah, like I said, gently pull these apart. Just take your time with it. Right, look at that nice flat surface and then one by one just gently tease them apart so you're getting a nice selection of Rebecca. I shall put the name tag in on the middle ones there and then we shall carry on like so in there like so try and, get, try and keep them all centered that's the main thing I think it just looks a lot neater, a lot tidier, it's a lot better to look after them when they're all centered. This one in like so. Like I said, got a really good root system these. Some people like to pot them on when they're a little bit smaller before the roots get too big so they don't get as tangled as they are doing now. But I like them with a bigger root system. I think they uh, take a lot easier and a lot better. So yeah, these will Becky, I'm so looking forward to getting these to flower this year. I'll show you what it says on the packet. 
Now this is what I'm, these were a pound, and this is Rebecca Aries. These are half hardy perennial, long lasting, cone flowers with strongly contrasting bicolored blooms on tall but sturdy stems, a rewarding addition to mixed borders. Well, I've got a mixed perennial, Hutch Gordon border, and this says, so indoors, February, March and April, plant out June, indoor sowing, so thinly in trays of seed compost, cover lightly with a fine layer of compost, firm gently, keep moist and warm, seeds and June, April, June, 14, 21 days. Going on, when large, you'll transplant to five centimetres, two inches apart, and sit, cut flowers, pick when buds, just opened, 500 seeds, so, for a pound, 500 seeds, and look at the beautiful flowers on there, absolutely gorgeous, and these are like, 30 inches, 75 centimetres, so like, two and a half foot, so these are going to look really well, in front of my borders, just another picture, just so you get it, so yeah, I'll get the rest of these done, and like, like I said, I have only used a fraction, and I always like to, when I open my seeds, I always like to cut them with scissors so then I can fold them and keep them for next year. Like it says, these are half hardy perennial. So it's just not warm enough to grow these all year. And then I've got some really tiny ones here that will get potted on. And if by magic, I shall come back when I've nearly done these folks I just want to show you I don't know if you just see that under here just some trying to transplant these I notice look at that green fly on those just under the leaf there which I'm not happy about at all just there so I'm going to transplant them over because I shall give them a feed today when I water them in they, should, they will go into my into propagator and then I shall spray them tomorrow. I don't want to spray them today because I don't want to shock them too much. Another day with green fly is not going to be the end of the world. I just want to show you that for this. Look at, look at that, that is absolutely magnificent root system on there. Yeah, I don't want to uh, shock them. Like I said, they have got a green fly. If I wasn't putting them on, I would spray them today. If I discovered that earlier. I wonder why some of them were actually stunting, and that was a sign that they'll have started to get an infection. The leaves can distort. The leaves can distort, and then you end up with a bit like this one. That one is not looking well at all if you just look at it. But, waste not one, not. This will get planted up. I like to give all my plants a bit of start as I can, save as many as I can. I don't like feeding them when I don't need to. But, I mean, that's what I you end up with loads of plants that you don't need as well. So, we're going to learn. Get a couple more done. But yeah, I'm really disappointed about that discovering that they have got some green fly in there. We'll get back to it, we'll get it sorted. I said today I shall feed them in, put them on. Right, here we go, I've just got the last couple to do. I might just go to get 40 out of here. Because these are just really tiny, the last couple. As you can see these. These are absolutely minute. The last few. There might be a couple in here. Oh yeah. They're really nice. I'll just get these last few to grow so I've got 14 here then like I said I've discovered a few bits of green fly on here so these will get sprayed tomorrow or I might do it today after I've fed them put them away I might need to propagate them I shall get one more yeah decent root system as well yeah that last one in there some feed up then as I get that planted so yeah get some feed me this is what I'm using tomorite I probably well I do half what it what it says when they're this small 
So I'll just mix a little bit of this up. Just mix a little bit in like so. Just in here. Give it a good shake. Yeah, just give it a good shake then. Just nice nicely. And then just gently give it a water and a feed. But you can see towards the end how small they get these and that they they should be the same size as the ones at the beginning of the tree. And that is because of the green fly. I mean, I've got that many things in my greenhouse. I need to have a road to where I go around and basically a couple of days a week just check under every leaf. Because I spray a certain plant for it, I think, right, I've got on top of it and then bang, the back again under some, onto something else, which, which I wasn't expecting. And this is this year, I've been using these organic peat free composts and I swear they've got, they have a lot more moisture and they have a lot of pest in them. It's probably not all like that, but the ones I've had this year certainly have been because I've never had a year like it with green fly and white fly. It's been just been ridiculous, and that's the only thing I can think of where they're coming from is they're getting pitched in, in these uh, organic peat free compost. But yeah, yeah, let's give it another little water and a feed with my tomorite, and then. Right, well that's it. They've been given a water and a feed. So they're in the petunias from uh, two days ago. As you can see, they've shot off they have. But I can see here that these are getting some green fly on them where the leaves are curling like they are doing. That's leaf damage, that's damage. So what I shall do is put the lid on here. This has got a heat mat underneath it. Which is brilliant. Make sure the vents are open. Yeah. So yeah, I'll come back and check those and I shall spray them probably today or tomorrow for green fly. And I'll go over everything else and I'll make sure there's no green fly under stuff like this. I'll have a really good root round. So yeah, that's my Rubecchia. Rubecchia Aries. Potting on. If you've got any questions, that you to ask folks. Say hi monkey. Hi monkey. Hi Paul. If you like my videos, please subscribe. And as always, happy sowing, happy growing. Please keep safe and thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye.